What's going on data devotees? It's Jameson here. This video is a brief introduction to the R Studio IDE or integrated development environment. Now, what is an IDE? Well, essentially working with R, base R can be very minimalist and uh, sort of non-interactive. And what R Studio offers is the ability to be able to click on shortcuts, streamline your work process, and really allow you to be able to perform a lot of critical data analytic tasks with the click of a button and making just working with R a heck of a lot easier overall. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump right in. So there are actually five different components. I'm in R Studio right now and five different components uh, that are kind of key to the R Studio IDE. And we're only really looking at four of them. So first we have the console. This is where the magic happens. This is where if you were to write a line of code or use a function, it's not only going to evaluate the expression or evaluate the code that you, uh, you write inside the console, it's also going to uh, print out or return the values uh, which you request or whatever uh, really is the result of evaluating the expression that you've passed to the console. Uh, so in other words, for another example, if we did the sum of 1, 5, and 10, that not only is occurring in the console, but it is returning the value uh, after we evaluate this expression. And so in this case, the sum of 1, 5, and 10 is 16. So that's the console. Again, where the magic happens. This is the environment panel. We'll talk about that. And also we'll talk about uh, what's going on with the files plots and help panels specifically down here. Again, we're really only focusing on kind of core aspects in this introduction. So um, the uh, fourth component that you can see right off the bat is the menus that you have up here, which is a series of drop down menus, which are uh, some of which are more important than others at this point in learning about R. Uh, and then the fifth component we haven't seen yet. So here we're working interactively. I can press Control L to clear the console and anything in it that kind of makes it easier to see uh, see things in my workspace. Um, but also, we're not really keeping track of what's happening when it comes to evaluating these different expressions or lines of code in R. There is a way to be able to keep track of that by clicking on the History tab. But what if we wanted to be able to save the steps in our data analytic process and leave this sort of breadcrumb trail for us to see how we process data in the past and also to share with collaborators for reproducible research and ultimately just keeping track of what we're doing. Uh, so one thing that you can do is if we click on file, we can actually open up an R script. Now this is the fifth and probably one of the most important, if not the most important component of the R Studio IDE uh, working environment. And so a script is going to keep track of the different functions that you're using. It's where you leave your little breadcrumb trail um, of your data analytic processes so that you can share the script with others and you can share it with yourself in the future. So you can say, ah, this is what I did and make changes to it, modify it, etc. Essentially, again, replicating your analysis. Um, this is one of the key advantages of using a scripted language, hence why this is called a script. So we've already put some code in here. This is just the sum of one, five, and 10. Um, we can also put some other code like git working directory. Now, when I run things in script, I can run that simply by pressing control and then return, and that runs it down in the console. So even though you're recording your steps in the script itself, you're actually uh, processing the code or evaluating those expressions and getting your output in this case, the name of our working directory, uh, that's all happening again down in the console where the magic happens. So if I press control L, and in fact, if I, if I press control L to clear my console, that actually jumps my cursor down into the console. If you'd like to jump between the script and the console, you can press control one to jump up to the scripts. You can press control two to jump to the console. And if you press control shift and one, that will actually make ultimately your entire screen take up, uh, be taken up by your script. 
I'll press that again to go back. If I press Control Shift and 2, the entire screen is taken up by the console, which is pretty cool for certain uh, certain reasons, depending on what you're doing, and especially if you want to work what's called interactively if you're only working within the console and you don't really want to keep track of what you're doing. Um, but if we create a script, we might want to save that script. Now, a shortcut is Control S, just like in Microsoft Word or Excel or really... Uh, most uh, programs, but we can also click on file and then save or save as. Um, I'm just going to do control S as a shortcut. And so I'll save this as my scripts. Now, one important thing is that when you save scripts, they have to use the right file extension. So in this case, it's a script um, in R. So we are simply saving that with the dot R extension. If you don't do this, you're going to have a bad time when it comes to trying to reload this back into R Studio. So cool, I've saved it, it has a name, we can see that name, and I can even do Control shift n and create a new script. This time I'll ask for things in my directory with the directory function, and again, I'll do Control save we'll call this script2.r, and now we have two different scripts that are open. Um, again, uh, this is the .r script if you're using a R markdown script, uh, which you might be using for labs or reproducible reports. Um, you'll want to save that as a .rmd file, which is uh, uh, treated differently by R. If we want to jump between these tabs, a quick shortcut is to press Control tab and which just happens to be the same key by coincidence. And if I press Control shift tab that will jump left. So again, to jump to the rightmost tab is control tab and control shift tab will make it jump to the left. If I want to exit a tab, I can always press control W. And if it's saved, if it's not saved, it'll prompt you and say, hey, do you want to save this? So cool. Those are scripts. That's how you create a new script and save. Um, let's talk a, a little bit more about what's in the menu. So in terms of session, this is going to be probably one of the most used things that you uh, used features, uh, and that's especially when it comes to choosing your working directory. So again, I just clicked on session and uh, change working directory, and I already have it set to something I want. In this case, it's downloads. So your working directory is just a folder, and that contains kind of all of the all of the files. Um, if you write a new file and save a data table, for example, in, in, as a CSV um, without any further specifications. Um, let's take the built-in Iris data set, for example. Actually, let's do empty cars. And empty cars is a data set that's built into R um, for practice and, and demonstration. And this contains 32 vehicles. So if I wanted to do write.csv and I can say, uh, let's write the object empty cars, we'll call it empty cars.csv. And if I run that, we can see actually that empty cars.csv is now in that directory. Cool. Um, so again, we can change this path to be more sophisticated, a little bit longer, more specific, and we can we can save empty cars into uh, a different directory, but automatically it's going to be saved into your working directory. And that's one of the more important points. So if I wanted to read directly uh, from my working directory, I don't have to make any further specifications. Read.csv, run it, and then boom, we just read that in from our folder. That's how you manually do it. We'll talk about automatically doing that in a second. Uh, other features are when it comes to tools, uh, global options allows you to be able to customize the appearance of your RStudio IDE. And so it's quite nice if you want to set up a cool theme or something that's going to be easier for you to read uh, if you prefer to code during the day or code during the night and that sort of thing. You could change your font size, you could change your font, etc. You can also choose um, which panes exist. And so, uh, for example, uh, if we wanted to get rid of the tutorial pane that exists up here um, and we can simplify our environment a bit looks like it has to either exist here or there um, if we press apply 
we've moved tutorial from the upper right pane to the lower right pane and it's now down there. So by default, that's not going to be existing there, but that's okay. Uh, lastly, uh, there is help. So if you were to click on help and then cheat sheets, um, there are a ton of different cheat sheets here for different uh, very important uh, common industry packages or extensions in R. You can always click on these and this will provide um, a very dense but extraordinarily informative uh, cheat sheet. This one in particular is on the actual IDE, precisely what we're going over now, but it's really showing you every single feature, uh, whereas this video, of course, is focusing just on a few important ones. So that is the uh, cheat sheets that are available in the help menu. Now, if we look in the, the environment panel here, um, essentially this is keeping track of the objects that you have in your environment. So if I create an object, uh, let's say I want to create object X and I want to save the value five in it. Now we have values, uh, we have object X and we, or the name of the objects, and then we have uh, a preview of the values. In this case, there's only one, so it shows five. But if we had object Y and we wanted to put values 1 through 100 in there, now we have, uh, since it's a series of values or a non-scalar value, unlike X, object Y, it shows us a preview of the, the initial values. It shows us uh, what kind of values or the class of values they are. In this case, it's an integer. And it shows us the length. In other words, how many elements exist inside this object? So we did one through 100. So there are 100 different elements in this, uh, what's called a vector or in this object. Uh, if we wanted to save actual data, we can again use empty cars. Now this gets classified differently. Uh, Z, object Z now contains uh, tabular data. And so it's classified as data. 32 observations and 11 variables. And we can even click on that to get an interactive preview, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and lastly, we can even save uh, a, a new function. And so uh, we will call this uh, read.c, or we'll call it read, but we're actually just gonna be saving the classic read.csv function. And now that's being identified as a function up in the right. So again, this is keeping track of our objects that are in our environment. Um, and that's important because R in, in R, practically everything is an object. It's an OOP or object oriented programming language. Uh, and so when it comes to data sets, when it comes to singular values or scalar values, when it comes to uh, a series of values known as a vector, or when it comes to, uh, actual functions themselves, all of these really are comprised of objects. And so you'll want to keep track of them here. If we press this broom, we can get rid of those objects. Uh, from our working environment and we'll have to recreate them if we want those to exist again. Uh, we can press, uh, we can use function ls to list all of the objects in our environment. And if we want to import a data set, we can do that as well. Um, text just means CSV files, TSV files, or any other uh, kind of flat files, as opposed to Excel, which is a .xlsx file. So if we chose, um, to import the empty cars file we wrote. It gives us a preview of the code down here. It gives us some options that will update those code um, or that code. So if I chose to uh, adjust these parameters down here to skip the first 10 observations, we see that this code preview now includes a skip argument. So this will adjust dynamically. So uh, we can even call this uh, my cars and that changes the object to which we are assigning these data. If I press import, it's going to open it up in an interactive viewer. It's also going to run the code in the console, again, where the magic happens. And I can even copy and save that code in my script so that I know how to read this in for the next time, right? Um, and we can see that uh, my cars has been added as uh, an, environment, uh, an environmental object. So that covers this section. Now, lastly, uh, is this lower right um, series of panes or panels. Now we have files. This is just showing what's going on in your working directory, what files you have that exist there. You can even delete things. Um, 
So do be careful with that as well. But um, so I just deleted the iris data set that's saved in the working directory. Um, plots is uh, important. So if we wanted to plot simply one through 10, um, that will appear in the plots panel. Whereas if we wanted to plot, um, for example, empty cars, uh, MPG, and empty cars uh, weight, as you can imagine, there's a negative relationship between, or negative correlation between weight and miles per gallon. So the heavier your car is, the less fuel efficiency there is, and it kind of decreases uh, as weight uh, increases. So um, we can zoom in on this plot by clicking on zoom. We can also export this with custom export options, and we can also clear any plots that exist, or we can cycle through them with these arrows. Lastly, there's help. And help is particularly important when it comes to really, if you want to find out any more information about uh, a particular function, or also you can get help for built-in data sets. So here, generic XY plotting, this tells you everything that you could potentially put in the parentheses. So if we did XLIM or XLAB, not sure why that's not auto-completing, but that's okay. Uh, but really explained in the help documentation is uh, everything here um, in terms of uh, arguments that you can use for those functions, or in other words, different ways to use the function. Um, you can also use help for built-in data sets, and that's always nice too, especially if you need to source your data um, and different things like that. So this is empty cars again, and it gives us a definition of each variable and the units of measurement, so weight every 1,000 pounds, miles uh, per U.S. gallon, um, cubic inches in, uh, when it comes to engine displacement or engine size, and everything like that. So help is extraordinarily uh, helpful. <laughs> uh, so this is the RStudio environment. Uh, I hope you found this introduction helpful. I realize there was a lot of information coming out at the same time, so please feel free to rewind and try to absor absorb this as much as possible. Again, RStudio makes R using R extraordinarily easy, much more streamlined and much more convenient. And it's just going to create a healthier relationship between you and the language going forward. So uh, as your needs increase and become more sophisticated, I hope you learn more about this awesome environment and this awesome tool, because really it's going to make life a heck of a lot easier for you. Take care.